Hey everybody, welcome to HomeRecordingMadeEasy.com and here on my YouTube channel and welcome to the PreSonus Studio One Beginner's Guide. These series of videos are intended to help the absolute beginner whether you're coming from another DAW or whether you've never used any DAW before and you're just getting into using Studio One. These series of videos are gonna help you get up and running as quick and easily as possible with no fuss and no muss to help you navigate your way through Studio One, set up a basic song file and give you a basic overview of all the more common features used in Studio One, both for recording music and for mixing music. Once you've watched this entire series here on YouTube and you want to take your mixing or your recording to the next level, I highly recommend that you check out these three training courses on my website at homerecordingmadeeasy.com. You want to check out Recording in Studio One Artist Made Easy, Mixing in Studio One Made Easy Volume One, and Mixing in Studio One Made Easy Volume Two. Those three courses are designed to help you go from what you're going to learn in these free set of videos and actually help you start making music and mixing music in your home studio. The links will be in the description box below, and there's also a 25% discount coupon that you can use at checkout to get 25% off any one of the courses I just mentioned. So thanks for joining me in this series, and I'll see you in the next video. Okay, everybody, um, in this video, we're gonna take a look at um, the new, a new feature in version 4.5, um, which is the plugin manager. So let's take a look at the plugin manager a little bit, show you what's new about the plugin manager or why we have a plugin manager and some other things with plugins inside of the browser. So to get to the plugin manager, um, we wanna make sure our browser is opened here by clicking the bottom right-hand corner. We can close our mixer view here. And we're gonna come up to the home button here at the top uh, left-hand part of the browser, a little house, click on that. And at the bottom, we're gonna have a button called the plugin manager. Now, as I said, this is new to version 4.5, and this is really cool. This is like a kind of something that uh, uh, very Cubase-like in that a way for us to be able to see what plugins we have on our system and as well as organize them in a way so when we open our browser and we're looking through all our plugins, we can see only the plugins that we want to see, which is very helpful, especially if you have a lot of third-party plugins on your system that maybe you've gathered over the years and some you use and some you don't use. So let's take a look at our plugin manager. So here it is. On the left-hand side, we have a name where we can filter things and we can search for plugins by name. We can, uh, we can look at it by type, whether it's native audio units, which is more of kind of a logic, uh, Apple logic thing, virtual instrument 2, VST2, VST3, or any other types of plugins that you may have. And we can also look at it by vendor, all the vendors that you have uh, installed on your system. As you can see, I have quite a list. Okay, we can uh, uh, deselect or reselect or deselect all, uh, and then we can go down and we can check off, just taking a look at, let's see, reset the filter. Okay, reset will recheck everything. So that'll show us all of our all of our plugins. And then we have our blacklist down here, which are maybe plugins that we deemed that are incompatible with Studio One. And sometimes this will happen with free plugins. You download free stuff and they don't always work well with Studio One or any DAW for that matter. Or plugins that have problems. When you first start off Studio, start up Studio One, it'll scan through all your plugins. We talked about that uh, in a couple of videos earlier. Um, and some of that are having problems that Studio One may find problematic. They may put them on what's called the blacklist and you would see those here. I don't have any as of this time. So what's really cool is that the way you um, can set up your plugin manager will dictate the way you're gonna see your plugins in the browser. So for example, um, if I wanted to just, let's deselect all of these. If I just wanted to look at my, uh, let's say my uh, Steven, or let's pick one a little bit more, our plugin alliance plugins, okay? And then we know we wanna look at our VST2s and or VST3s here. Okay, here's all the plugins on my system by plugin alliance. Now let's say I wanna just look at, in the browser, I just, just wanna see the VST2s. Let's say I don't wanna look at all the VST3s for whatever reason, I just wanna show you, okay? Now if I were to close this for a second here, and I were to come over back to my browser and go to my effects, and I come to my plugin alliance folder, well, first I wanna re, re uh, I wanna right click and I wanna refresh it, because we made changes in the plugin manager. And now if I were to open up the Plugin Alliance folder, it only shows the plugins that I have dictated in the Plugin Manager, which is really, really nice, okay? So if I open up my Plugin Manager again by going back to the Home button, Plugin Manager, okay? And here we are, and here's all the VST3s that we have. Now let's, for Plugin Alliance, okay? Now let's say, when I'm looking at my list here, you'll see that they have little, uh, little dots that are highlighted and dots that are grayed out. 
those the ones that are highlighted are the ones that are going to show up in your list in your browser when you're when you're cycling and um, sorting through your plugins. So for example, I have the BX console here that is highlighted. Then I have the next four plugins are grayed out. And then I have the last, what, four plugins are highlighted. So what that means is out of all these plugins, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven plugins, um, four of them, four of them? Yes, no, three of them are not highlighted, which means that I'm only gonna have the ones that are highlighted in the browser. One, two, three, four, five plugins by Plugin Alliance. So if I were to close this and look at my Plugin Alliance folder, I should only see five plugins. Here they are, one, whoops, those are presets. One, two, three, four, and then the bottom one here, five, five plugins. The other ones don't show in my browser because I gray them out or hide them, hit them in the plugin manager. Okay, by doing that. So you understand that? So if I wanna unhide them, so I see them in my browser, I just click this little dot here and you can see now they're all highlighted. Now I should see all the plugins. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight plugins for Plugin Alliance. So if I were to close this again and go back to my effects and I were to refresh my Plugin Alliance folder, I should see them all and here they are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight plugins, okay? I hope that makes sense and how you can control, by using the plugin manager, we can control what we see or what we don't see in our browser. Now you may be asking, well, why would you not wanna see all the plugins that you have installed on, on my system in my browser? Why would I wanna hide any of them? Well, there are certain vendors, for example, like Universal Audio is one of them, where if you have Universal Audio plugins, okay, let me just uh, check these off. Okay, when you have a Universal Audio system, all when you download the Universal Audio software to your, say your Apollo interface or your Universal Audio hardware, all of the plugins that are available, whether you've paid for them or not, are in your list. And then the way you, um, you could, so you can either demo them and the ones that you've paid for um, that are through your Universal Audio account will be the ones that are active that you can actually use. The ones that you didn't pay for, if you try to use those plugins, it's gonna say, would you like to demo it? This is not activated. So if you have a bunch of plugins, like I have a bunch of Universal Audio plugins, but I'd say about half of them, I don't, per, I don't own them. So I don't wanna see them in my list. And as you can see here, my Universal Audio list, you can see that I have a lot of them grayed out here. These are the ones that I don't personally own, but if I don't hide them in the plugin manager, they're gonna show up in my browser. So every time I wanna pick a Universal Audio plugin, I have to scroll through a lot more plugins in the list than maybe what I currently own. So this is a way for you to be able to only show in the browser what you want to what you want to see and it's a way for you to kind of keep an inventory if you will which is probably a better term on all the plugins that you have on your system and again this is something that's new um, to studio one um, and so this is really really cool it's a great way to be able to clean off clean out the browser of stuff you don't need some or even plugins maybe that you own that you don't use anymore you don't particularly like or care for you, you can always hide them so they don't get cluttered up in your browser, when you look under your effects tab, you can only see the plugins that you want to see. Okay, so that's what the plugin manager is all about. Play a little bit with the plugin manager. You'll, I think you'll find it's a nice way to manage your plugins, um, and it's a it's a new addition to version 4.5. The other thing I want to show you, which a lot of people ask me about, is they want to know how do I get these little icons of the plugins that come standard with PreSonus when you open up the browser, how do I do that with my third-party plugins? As you can see, when you look at my FabFilter folder, you can see I have those little icons. Now, they don't come defaulted this way. I wanna show you how you do it. So if I were to open up my mixer here, okay, just to have a couple of tracks that are open, and let's go to a folder that I don't have any uh, there yet. Okay, so you can see all my Waves plugins. All of these don't have any of the little thumbnails there to make it easier to find. Okay, so if I wanna do that, what I do is I'll just take one here. Here's the Abbey Roads plate. I'll stick this on my master bus just for an example. Should populate here in a second, hopefully. Come on, don't make a liar out of me. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so once you have the plugin window open, you come up to the top here where you can see it's the first plugin in our inserts, number one, Abbey Road Plates Mono. Click this little triangle and come down to the bottom where it says update plugin thumbnail. You click on that and now you can see over in the right hand side, we have our Abbey Road, Abbey Road Plate plugin. 
very, very handy for when you want to scroll through a bunch of plugins. You can just look at the icon and you don't need to look at the title of the plugin there and read all the text. Okay. Once again, let's, uh, let's do another one here. Uh, here is a bass, uh, CLA bass. So let's put that on our mono track here. This is a Chris Lord algae bass plugin. Okay. So once again, you come up to the, where the plugin is listed at the tab here, click the triangle update plugin thumbnail and there it is okay so that's how you do it now here's a little tip for people that were in version 3 um, or version 4.2 before you updated to version 4.5 i had all of these already done in my browser when you update to version 4.5 you lose all these plugin thumbnails for third-party plugins and now i need to go back and reset them all i didn't realize that till after i updated it so if you're coming from another version of presonus and you've always will have the, the PreSonus ones come standard like this. You don't need to set them up like this. But if you had third-party plugins like I do, where I already have had them all set up with my thumbnails, as soon as you update to version 4 or 5, all these plugins, thumbnails go away for third-party and you have to reset them. So that's kind of a bummer. But using the plugin manager, again, you can only put in the list what you want to put in your browser list, and then you can put the uh, icons there just as I showed you to make it easy to navigate. Okay, so I hope you found this video helpful. Once again, uh, click all the links below um, in, in the description box. You get uh, discounts and, and stuff on different courses and whatnot. And also make sure you check out the uh, PreSonus Beginner's Guide for version 4.5. I have more videos coming every single week. Leave your comments below and I will see you guys in the next video.